Good evening. Welcome. So, quick show of hands. How many people here think that winter is never ending? <laughs> it has been a long DC winter. My goodness. Well, I appreciate everybody coming out on, unfortunately, yet another cold evening around here, though not as cold as it was last time. This is a continuation in our series on total recovery, solving the mystery of chronic pain and depression. The goal of this, as many of you know who have been here before, is to reframe, to redefine uh, this business of chronic pain and depression because we're actually pretty abysmal at treating these things. If you look at the occurrence of chronic pain in major depressive disorders, and the same can be said of generalized anxiety disorders and post-traumatic stress syndrome, you find that there's a huge overlap and that in fact <coughs> we've got about 21 million uh, people a year suffering with major depressive disorder. Now, this slide says that there's 47 million, and I actually happen to like this number better, but if you, be if you believe the uh, more recent studies that have come out from the Institute of Medicine, they claim that 116 million people in this country suffer with uh, chronic pain. It's a third of the country. So, but I think if we're going to be really precise in terms of how many people really suffer with chronic pain, the answer is probably closer to about 47 million. But the overlap between these conditions is huge, 50 to 65 percent. And more importantly, if we look at the ends of these, the odds of getting better, okay, are about 50 percent on either end. Not earth shattering, but at least 50 percent. If you look at the group in the middle, the odds of getting better by some studies, 9 percent. We stink at this. We don't know what it is we're treating. We don't know what we're looking at. And what the literature is beginning to show us is that we now have some insight as to what that is and what's going on, and thus we have to completely rethink how we're treating these diseases. So we're looking at what I've now defined as central sensitization syndrome. Central sensitization syndrome is the co-occurrence of chronic pain and a neuropsychiatric condition, depression, a generalized anxiety disorder, post-traumatic stress syndrome, and possibly even bipolar disease. There's evidence in the literature that that's also neuroinflammatory in nature. The basis of these things is that they are neuroinflammatory. The brain is inflamed, all right, and that inflammation is mediated by the immune system. So it's neuroimmunologic <coughs> disease uh, causing neuroinflammation. And of greater problem, it causes neurodysregulation, that is the way the brain works, is disrupted, and it causes neurodegeneration. It's particularly a problem because the longer these conditions go on, the harder they are to treat. The basis of this problem is the immune system in the central nervous system, which is the microglia. And there's a whole bunch of things that will uh, affect the microglia and bring them into an upregulated position. And the work that I've done and the focus of my studies has been on microglia, uh, what turns them on, what turns them off, and uh, looking by reframing this as neuroinflammatory diseases, we come up with different answers, okay? So one young woman that I saw today uh, has had problems with uh, chronic headaches and depressive disorders. Uh, she has been uh, treated what they thought was quite thoroughly at uh, the, one of the leading headache centers in the country up in Michigan for the last five years. They have tried everything inside and out without any success in really getting control of her headaches. They missed the diagnosis of Lyme disease. So I have other patients where severe depressive disorders, they've missed the diagnosis of celiac disease. So when we see these conditions and they're so unresponsive to what we're treating, the bottom line is we're actually missing the cause of the problem. And as long as the, the cause of the problem remains in the system and the system remains inflamed, we aren't getting it better. There's a lot of things that can set off the microglia in the central nervous system, so we have to be careful about looking at all of these things, and we've talked about some of them in prior lectures. In today's lecture, we're going to be focusing on specifically on metabolic syndrome and obesity. Uh, these are actually inflammatory states in the body, metabolic syndrome, I'll let Dr. Kahan go through the specifics of these uh, diagnoses, but basically three out of five of these equals a definition of metabolic syndrome. Uh, we, huge problem. We have uh, almost over 20 percent of Americans uh, suffer from these conditions, and if you're over the age of 60, uh, 40 percent of Americans are suffering with metabolic uh, syndrome. Why is this important? 
aside from the general health issues. We see elevation in a number of inflammatory factors. These are the same factors, interleukin-2 in particular, and tissue necrosing factor alpha, that we see elevated in issues with chronic pain and chronic depression. They are factors which are secreted by microglia in the central nervous system that mediate inflammation. If we look at metabolic syndrome, the occurrence of pain, in fact, correlates with the occurrence of metabolic syndrome. So women with fibromyalgia were 5.56 times more likely to have metabolic syndrome than controlled group. Chronic neck pain in males, relative risk was 2.1, and in women it was 1.5, 50 percent greater occurrence of depression in this group. So these are inflammatory conditions, and as to be expected with inflammatory conditions, you see other inflammatory conditions in the brain. Obesity and, uh, uh, and being overweight, this is the definition of them, but more to the point is 65 percent of adults are either overweight or obese. And obesity, again, and overweight is again associated as an inflammatory condition in the body. And sure enough, we see a much higher prevalence of back pain, chronic headaches, migraines, tension headaches, osteoarthritis, fibromyalgia, and abdominal pain. If you look at depression in these individuals, 55 percent increased risk of developing depression in people who are obese, and there's a 58 percent uh, increased risk of becoming obese in those individuals who are depressed. All right? Inflammation in the body is the thing we have to go after in any and all forms if we're going to be successful at treating these conditions of central sensitization syndrome. Lots of things that can help in terms of reducing the inflammation. We've had lectures on meditation. We've had lectures on prolotherapy, regenerative medicine. We've had lectures uh, on nutrition before, but we'll have a much more in-depth lecture tonight. Uh, HBOT, which Dr. Sam Shore uh, talked about last time. So we're slowly going through the list of things of what we can do in order to solve this problem and, and resolve this problem. Plug for my book. My book is due out May 6th for Rodale and will be really outlines all of these issues through case studies and what's going on.